Okay, Nathan. Of all these tools, I'm just gonna I'm gonna send you an X-Acto knife, which is for tracing things. I'll talk about it later. And then your main knife, of which only two blades you really use, and that's the two gouges. The little one and the big one. Okay. The little one is for making straight lines. The big one's for digging out lots of wood. We'll talk about both of them. They fit in and tighten and you're ready to go. Now, there's three different types of cuts on a pattern and here's the pattern that I'm going to send you. The first one is just to outline and that's what we're going to do first here is just outline around the edge here. Before I outline because of the grain in the wood, I used the sharp knife and traced it to cut through the grain. Otherwise it'll splinter on you. I did at least the side with the pattern. You may want to go out and do a freehand out beside it so it doesn't splinter the other way. And again, the purpose of outlining, it's worth the time to make sure that because of the grain in the wood right here that it doesn't splinter when you go across the grain. Okay, so I've already outlined this and I'm going to show you the, the basic maneuver for um, following the line around the outside of this pattern. Now, you have to make sure that you're in a comfortable place, you're up on top and in control of your knife blade. This cannot just be done freehanded, just digging out. You've got to, it's, a, it's basically pushing forward as I've got it in here in the, in the palm of my hand, gripping with the right here close where it tightens. And it's a wiggle, push and wiggle. You're not going to try to take too deep. You never want to cut deeper than the thickness or the depth of your, you, your gouge here. And you must have this thing under control. So please practice on this pattern. Don't try to do the real thing uh, without doing a lot of practicing. It's not hard, but it takes some skill involved to how to, how to basically get it done. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to take, notice how I've got my left hand. I've got the thumb, my thumb on the blade, so I can help kind of control it. As you get more experience, you will be able to feel whether or not the gouge is going to flip out and uh, go where it doesn't want to go, because you can hurt yourself if you're not careful. Okay, so I'm going to grip the top of the board and put my thumb on the blade, on the uh, gouge, press into the wood, and then I'm going to wiggle, push and wiggle. I'm not going to go too fast. I'm not going to go too deep because you can always go back. You will tend to dig deeper if you're going with the grain like I am right now. Okay, and you're going to get the little trail. I can come back and make it deeper, but be careful because the wood will give way. That's why I put my thumb on it right here. It helps feel whether or not the wood is giving way too quick and then you lose control of the knife blade. Okay, and when you get done you've got your little smooth little groove. Now, it's different if you're going across grain. Let's see, let's, let's come across here. As you're coming across grain, it won't go quite as easy, and because I've traced it already with the knife, the cut is nice and smooth. If I hadn't traced along here, then it would be uh, it would be splintering out and make make it rough and not look as good. Okay, so whenever I tell you on a pattern to outline something, that's what I'm talking about. We're outlining it with the knife, and then making the trail all the way around. And that's the basic cut for the first thing you want to do. Okay, the second thing is to outline and then remove the wood. For example, the end here in the middle, hopefully I've got the camera on it. For this end, I am instructed you to dig the wood out of all this, remove all the wood inside the end. So the first thing you would do is take your knife and outline it so that there's no splinters. Following the pattern as much as possible. All right. 
Now, once you get it outlined, then you're going to use your little gouge to outline the end all the way around, both sides. Notice the I'm still I'm pressing and wiggling. Don't try to take too much. Don't try to do too shallow. You have to be able to feel the control of your blade. Otherwise, it'll slip and go up. You'll lose it. You're liable to hit your hand, cut yourself. All kinds of things you can do here. Also, if it would slip forward, see, I'm going to hit my finger that's up here. So it's very important that you be have a feel for this when you're doing this kind of a cut. All right. Notice I've outlined here the, the main part of the end. And you'll see this. I'm going to send this to you so you'll be able to see it and help and do the practice to finish it. Unscrew it, remove your little gouge, and get your big gouge out. Okay? Now, here's where we come in, and we're going to remove the wood. Same, same motion. You just don't want it to go quite as deep because this will remove lots of wood, and it won't be very pretty if you get it too deep. Push and wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That's how you get your motion forward. Okay, and you remove all the wood. How deep do you go? You go as deep as you want it to, to look. It's your, it's your pattern. Come at it from both directions. Smooth it out. You can always go deeper. There's always one direction that is easier than the other, even with the grain of the wood. So be careful. Go back and forth and see which way is the easiest. As it turns out, this is the easiest way to go. I'm feeling the wood here is right side up. The wood gives way a lot easier. And you go close to the edge so that you can clean it out. Smooth off your wrinkles so that it's a a complete thing. Nice rounded area. And as you can see, we've now removed it. And you would have to do this. And of course, it's going to be a lot more difficult down here in the base parts of the end. I did the easy part. Okay. So you've got the outline cut. You've got the removing or the gouging out cut of wood. The second or the third type of that you're going to use on this particular pattern is a little more work but it's it's worth it in the long run you're going to finish the outline all the way around the uh, the symbol then you're going to go around the edge of all the other things I said in my instructions I said outline outline all of this Okay, so you're going to outline the paw, you're going to outline the pad here, the big pad, and then you're going to outline the little toe pads. And the idea here is to remove all the wood in here. You're going to leave this part standing, you're going to leave the pad standing, the triangle toes standing and all the rest of it will be removed and I pointed that out on the pattern and so that's kind of the relief um, the example that I'm sending you I'm sending you a couple of examples besides this is the Penn State symbol and you'll notice how I removed all the wood away from the Penn State symbol leaving it standing kind of like a graphic relief type of thing whereas the name sign that I'm sending you that I've done is completed that you you guys can keep and use if you want to is uh, an example of the outline and uh, and some digging out uh, just like I did on your on the cradle on Caroline's cradle a lot of that stuff is removing uh, small pieces like we did here like I showed you on the end but basically that's it um, in order to find and 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 put a pattern down uh, I've sent you two or three books to look through. I've sent you all my old patterns. I know some of them, obviously some of them aren't going to uh, be what you want, but it'll give you some ideas maybe. You certainly can borrow pieces of a pattern. Um, you use tracing paper 
and trace a part that you might want and then you use graphite paper which is like carbon paper to place it on the board by tracing over it with a pencil and that's how I did this I simply took the pattern that I'm sending you with the instructions and traced put graphite paper underneath and then traced around it with a pencil and that gives me the uh, the pattern on the board but use this to practice, practice, practice. And if you have any questions, you call, and I'll try to talk you through some of it. Um, but be real careful. Even get another piece of wood, and just if you don't want to work on this good pattern first, because it does take, and go slow. Don't try to go too deep. Don't try to go too fast. It's a, it's a, you have to learn to control the uh, gouge. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. The faster you wiggle, the, the cleaner the cut is. And you got to turn corners. And you can hopefully see, and I will send this to you for you to work on. I want this to be your practice board. Be nice for you to get this completely done. Uh, these lines, you would simply follow the lines that, that they're cross grain, so you're going to have to be real careful about splintering. And also you will take the center of the triangles out, the very center. I didn't mention that, I don't think, in my instructions. I forgot to put that on there. So anyway, that's the basics of wood carving. Um, as I said, I sent you some pictures. I've, I've sent you all my patterns and some books. Take care of those. Don't, you know, I want, I'd like to have those back someday. But, and then I've sent uh, a name board that you guys can keep as an example. I sent you a Penn State pattern that's almost done. I haven't varnished it, I don't think, but I've painted it. And then, of course, this one right here is your practice one. Uh, when you decide what size you want your name, this project to, to be, let me know and I'll make some uh, suggestions for you. Um, you can buy some bigger boards, but you have to be careful about warpage. That's why when I have a big name board or a big sign board, I usually take uh, one by one by threes, one by fours, and glue them together to make my own. Sand them off to make it smooth. A lot of times you get a, a just a full size cut board, like at Lowe's or someplace. And if you can get it as big as you're wanting, a lot of times it's warped and uh, not in good shape or lots of grain. So you got to be careful of that. Um, hopefully this will help you get started. I wish I could be there to help in person, help you get started, but. Uh, as I said, warning, be careful. This can cut you. I've cut myself many times over the years. You've got to be careful. The basic thing is have that, use, help your thumb of your left hand control that blade and, and feel. Feel how easy or soft or hard the wood is carving. And if you go slow, you can tell whether or not a, the blade is going to slip and possibly stick yourself. I'm going to send all this stuff, but as I said, the two gouges that go in this handle and the, uh, the sharp knife for outlining is really all you need. The other stuff is just there. I don't really, I've never really used them that much. So anyway, hope that helps. Um, I'll try to get this in the mail as soon as I can and get it to you. And uh, I'll make, make the DVD out of this and get it to you somehow, whether I send you a DVD or upload it some some place where you can download it and watch it so hope that helps give me a call if you have any other questions bye